Having diabetes for my whole life, I really don't know what it's like not to have it. He likes to play like little Wii games and he can completely forget about his diabetes for a day. So his, what, and his, this little Dexcom will go off and he'll be ignoring it for hours and I'll have to <laughs> remind him to check it. You want your children to um, take care of themselves over time. And, and he will, and she will. Uh, they're normal kids, but there's this extra challenge which is so bizarrely huge. The problem is that, you know, with some, when someone has diabetes, they need to sleep. And when they sleep, they can't take care of their blood sugar, and that's the challenge. When we started this project um, year, a few years ago, we were really focused on trying to build something that can take care of people with type 1 diabetes, but my goal was to get something in David's hands before he leaves for college. The greatest fear, in my mind, has always been what happens to him at night when he's at school and no one's there checking the blood sugar. So we're sort of the middle man. We don't develop the insulin pump or the glucose monitor, but we make the two talk and that's why it's closed loop. Right now it's open loop, it's broken. What we wanna do is take the patient or parent out of the loop and close the loop. So I'm wearing a little sensor transmitter uh, that, that speaks to a, um, a unit on the back of this device, which is physically connected to the iPhone, streams data into the iPhone, and every five minutes the glucose level is measured and recorded from the device. And a calculation is made based on the work that Firos and I have been doing together for these past years to determine how much insulin or glucagon to dose. Insulin which lowers your blood sugar, glucagon which raises it. The difference between what I've got in front of me and what he's got in front of him is that his brain has to be in between those two technologies. He's got to think about what to do with this information and how much insulin to dose. The current study we're doing right now is the first trial uh, we've ever conducted in an outpatient setting. Over the next eight months, we'll have completed more days under closed loop control than we did in the previous four and a half years. And in 2016, we'd like to, to present the device to the FDA for, uh, for review with, uh, you know, with hopefully approval by 2017. I'm not particularly interested in blood glucose levels in people's blood. It's not an interesting kind of thing to think about. I think about it all the time because we have to, but I don't think anybody should have to think about it ever. That's the goal. I know that it's really tough. He's been working on this for I don't know, 13 years, 14 years. I know that it's not just for me and it's for everyone with type 1. And I think that it's really great that he's been just spending all of his time on it. And I'm really proud of him. And I think that it's really great for all those who have type 1 and the future with type 1.